I'm so sorry about that. Uh, don't I had to. Uh, I live on a farm, and so I have to do all my my evening chores before the sun goes down. Oh, okay. That's what's up. That's what's up. We 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 do this all the time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I have a farm. I have a farm, and uh, you know it doesn't take up all my day. But I do have morning chores, and then I have evening chores oh, okay. that I have to do. Yeah. That's what's up. That's but, what, yeah. That's what you call discipline, right there. <laughs> yeah, I enjoy it. I love. Uh, I mean, it's just a small little hobby. I enjoy it. That's what's up. That's what's up. All right. Well, let's go ahead and uh, get this started. Yo, yo, yo. What's okay. up, everybody? Lockout Man back again with another podcast interview for you guys this evening. I am in the truck and I am on my 10, not on my 30. I am on my, well, actually, I'm on my 8 because I'm doing the 8 2 split, but I got to, I got to get all these interviews out the way for you guys for you guys that's what i do that's what i do what's up guys now you guys can see me i am here with a young lady that has her own recruiting solutions for uh for truck drivers i have met her on the facebook group um and then we became facebook friends uh, I noticed that she sends out a lots and lots of driver opportunities for drivers out here. I want you guys to give a warm welcome to Heidi. Did I pronounce your name right? Yeah, that's correct. Heidi Hart. Heidi Hart of Hart Solutions. How you doing this evening? I'm great. Thank you. All Thank right. you for having me. I appreciate it. Thank you for coming on. I, I appreciate you coming on. Um, so I see from, from the Facebook group, I, I see that you, you do a lot of, you do a lot of recruiting for, in, uh, you're independent doing recruiting for other companies, right? Yeah, that's correct. I have a, I have a business called Heart Driver Solution. And what we do is we, we work with about 10 really good carriers and, um, we, but really, what, we're working more for the driver than the carrier. Um, what we do is we talk to each individual driver. We find out what their experience level is, um, what their home time needs are, what kind of equipment you guys want, um, and really what kind of freight you want to haul. And then we, we match you up with the carrier that you're looking for, the job that you're looking for. All right, so uh, Heart Driver Solutions. I got your uh, I got your yeah, website yeah, up here. It. I got your website up huh? here on the uh, on the banner. Um, so with uh -huh. uh, so with that in mind, tell the uh, tell the people who you are and uh, where you from. Well, um, as I said, my name's Heidi Hart. Uh, I'm I'm from I live in Missouri, Springfield, Missouri, um, and the home uh, of Prime. I'm from <laughs> That's right. That's right. Now, I don't have anything in the world bad to say about Prime. Uh, they're five miles down the road from me, and for some people, they're a really, really good carrier to work for. I personally don't uh, work for them, but I do work for some of the other carriers in the Springfield area. I also work for carriers just all over the country. I really do. Um, but I come from a background of trucking. My dad was a, a truck driver my whole life. For, he was on the road for 30 years. He came off the road in 2015. Um, so I've been around it my whole life. And then um, I've been doing this. I opened my own business about five years ago. But before that, I was a driver manager for CFI for, for almost 10 years. So I've been in and around trucking. I haven't actually ever been a truck driver myself. Um, but I've been uh, a driver manager and a recruiter for the last 15 years. And like I said, my dad was a truck driver. So I really, my, when my dad was a truck driver, he was out there for three months at a time and then home for a week. Mm -hmm. Um, and then at Christmas time, he'd be home for two weeks. So I really understand the sacrifices that drivers make out there and the sacrifices that their families make for them to be out there. Mm -hmm. um, and I, tr I treat every driver I speak to the same way I'd want them to treat somebody to treat my dad if he was calling looking for a job. 
Exactly, exactly. Well, I'm not sure if you uh if you're familiar with me. Of course, you know me. You you know my government name on uh on Facebook, but uh but huh? but uh people know me as Lockout Men, and I I do have a series. Uh-huh. Uh, I do have a series called Make the Call, where I call all these recruiters and uh, talk to uh-huh. them about uh, about the comp about the companies that they represent. Now, being that you come from yeah. being that you come from a recruiter slash uh, driver manager background, uh, what's yeah. your experience? What, what's your experience first with the recruiter side, and then jumping on to the to the driver side? What was your experience with that? Um. Uh, what do you mean? I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so so being so being a recruiter, all right, some of the some yeah, of the yeah. some of the driver some of the recruiters that I have talked to, you know, they you know they sugarcoat, you know, sugarcoat the company. Right. Yeah, that's correct. Um, that's correct. You know, they they want to tell they want to tell the good side of the company just to get you in right. so they can get their bonus. So I guess my question right. to you is. Being that you worked the recruiter side, would you uh-huh. did you ever get any type of commission or bonus? Yeah. Well, that's what my business is. Okay. So, and 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 Lashawn, when I when I uh, I, I am familiar with your work. I like what you do because I think I feel like you keep people honest. And um, yeah, absolutely, I get a commission. I get a commission for every driver that I place. That's that's how I put food on the table, um, and the it doesn't cost the driver anything uh, to use my services. It's completely free to the driver. When I place a, a driver with a with any of my carriers, they pay me a commission, and that's what my business is. That's how I make money. That's how I put food on the table. But and you're right. There's a lot of sugar coating that happens in the recruiting world. <laughs> And it's not just recruiting. I mean, in the trucking industry, period, um, even in operations and stuff like that, there's a lot of sugar coating that goes on. But um, you know, I pride myself in being honest. Um, a lot of people, um, you know, do sugar coat because you're trying to make a sale. But you know, I put ads out there that sometimes I get a lot of uh, negative feedback about. Because I am honest about yeah, you, how yeah, much I, the pay I notice. Is. I, I, how much, I notice how it in the, the in the driver. Is. Yeah, yeah. In the driver I don't groups. say so you're going to make a you're going to make fifty thousand dollars if you're not. You know, you're not going to make a hundred thousand dollars on this. I'm lo- I'm I'm uh, very honest about how much the job pays, and sometimes that doesn't go over well in the group. You know, I'll get fried. They'll put me in a pan and fry me because they think that a job's not paying enough. But honestly, you know, uh, for some people, like I, I did an ad for a job in Mississippi that was paying $150 a day. It was a local job. Now, it actually, the take home on that is more like 200 mm-hmm. um, because you've got bo- you've got bonuses that you get um, and when you make so many stops. And then you get actual stop pay. And you get a uh, dock pay and stuff like that. But I didn't throw all of that in there because I'm not trying to sugarcoat it. I'm putting down what the bare bones, uh, you know, pay is. And you got to take a lot into consideration. A lot of the people that jumped on that and said, you know, that's terrible pay. They're coming from states that are not Mississippi, you know, right. because Mississippi, the freight, rates, the freight rates are terrible down there. And um, unless you go OTR, you're not going to make the kind of money that people are making on locals in Mississippi or, or I mean, in Pennsylvania or New Jersey or something like that. Okay, okay, so, that's that's what's up. Now that's uh that's on the recruiting yeah. side, and and I'm I'm assuming mm-hmm. you like you you like doing this. You you say you spent about what ten ten years with CS CFI recruiting, or you was a driver manager with no, CFI? I was a driver manager dispatch at CFI, and then I I started recruiting for my own uh, board, 
because when I lost drivers, which I didn't, I had really high retention on my board, but when I did lose a driver, um, because I got fired by safety or, you know, maybe they needed to take a local job because of family needs or something like that. I started replacing them with my, the drivers that I sort of went out there and sought out myself. Okay. And I, I figured out that I figured out that I liked that side of the industry. I liked, uh, finding drivers and, and matching them up with a company that actually meets their needs mm-hmm. because, um, there is a lot of, one of the reasons I like doing this job is there is a lot of dishonesty out there and people get lied to and they get into, um, a situation they think is one thing and it's not. And, you know, then they're in a bad situation. And I like to be someone who can help people get to actually where they need to be, where they need to be financially, where they need to be as far as their home life and work life balance. And, you know, I think I love trucking and I'm passionate about trucking. And I want to see more people come into the industry and actually stay in the industry. Um, so the, I think the key to doing that is getting people into the job that's actually right for them. And that's, because if they get into the job that they're, that's right for them, they're going to stay in the industry. And that's – oh, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. No, that's – that's all. <laughs> and that's what's up. That's what's up. You gotta get you you, you gotta get comfortable. Um I keep dropping my phone. Damn it. Uh you gotta get comfortable. Is it's all about finding the right company and getting comfortable with that company. Like I said before, your experience is not gonna be mine and mine is not gonna be yours. So you gotta you know, once exactly. you go in, once you go in and give that time to the you know to the company then you'll figure out whether it it is right for you i mean we can only we can only open the doors for you you have to walk through it that's you know um right all right so being the driver manager let's let's talk about that because a lot of the a lot of the times uh some of the some of the issues with, with with uh with majority of these drivers say comes from uh comes from driver managers um my my drive my first driver manager with us express wasn't wasn't all that gravy i mean you know she pretty Mm -hmm. much sugarcoat what uh she pretty much sugarcoat the situation for me you know being that i was right being that i was a new jack at the time you know, and I'm like, oh, okay. Right. Well, if I do you a favor, you do me a favor, and it, it yeah, it just didn't work out. Right. My second, my second driver manager with the second company I was with, he was great, he was awesome, but unfortunately, he left the company for you know greater pastures, and I have to jump. You know, I had to, I had to reset up a connection with the new driver manager, which didn't mesh well. And now the driver manager right. with the with the company I'm at now, you know, the driver manager, you know, we we really have a connection with each other. I mean, he actually calls me, makes sure that I'm all right, makes sure that the load is on point. He don't bother me. You know, he'll, he'll call me maybe like once in the morning to get me a status and then maybe once at night just for another status. But overall, the relationship between me and my driver manager is is a good one. So you being a being a former driver manager, how did you pride yourself with your with your drivers? How many drivers you had at the time? Is also well, uh, you know, at the time we were in a transition from becoming um, Conway to CFI back to CFI, and so at the time I had a big board. I had eighty drivers, but um and if any of my fleet 14 drivers are listening um i love you guys they still call me i still talk to my uh drivers it's been five years since i've been at cfi but my drivers still call me Uh, i still talk to them at least you know probably once a week i talk to a fleet 14 driver but um i love being a fleet i love being a driver manager um and i had a really good relationship with all of my drivers only a couple drivers in a in a in 10 years that I have a problem with, but I really, you're right. A driver manager is, it can make or break 
your experience at a company. It really can. And what my job was when I was a driver manager, my whole job, I had, so the company expected me to uh, monitor the productivity of my fleet, to, to monitor the home time of my fleet, to monitor the safety of my fleet, and to monitor MPG. Those are the things they wanted me to monitor. And I did that, but really my whole job description was simply to help the driver. And if you do that, all your staff are going to be great. If, if you're a driver manager where, you know, every call you are dedicated and and determined to help the driver, you're going to get good stats for, on all of those levels because drivers do a good job for you if you do a good job for them. Um, and the, the two things that are important to drivers are home time and money. If You know, getting home when you need to get home and when you're out there, you're making money. And, um, you know, what I hate to hear from drivers is that their driver manager is telling them they can't do anything about their miles or their paycheck or they can't do anything about, you know, getting them home when they're supposed to be home. If your driver manager is telling you that, you need to call your company and ask for another driver manager because the driver manager that is their job <laughs> they if you if your if your driver is planned on a trip home or your driver manager has your if you're a driver manager and your driver has requested home and the planner if you don't plan the driver yourself a planner does if the planner plans them on something that's not getting them home you get up out of your seat you go over and you tell them the planner to take that load off and to put them on something that's getting them home If your driver doesn't have the miles that they need that week and it's Wednesday, you know we're up against it, you go over and you start raising hell until your driver gets the miles that they need. So they get planned and stacked out and you pay them for layover, you monitor those things. Um, You should have a driver manager that's working hard for you. And if they're not, don't, don't give up on the company if you've got a bad driver manager. Don't, don't give up on the company yet. Make sure, reach out to your company. Give them an opportunity to get you to another driver manager. Now, if you get another driver manager with that company that's, you know, not great, you may be looking at needing them to get a different company. Exactly. Because, you know, leadership, the mentality of the, the top leadership does trickle down to middle management, which is driver managers. Mm-hmm. Um, but you should have a driver manager that is working for you. It's working hard for you because I'm going to tell you something. Every driver, this is a, this is a, something that every driver should, uh, a mentality they should have. If Whether you're a company driver or an owner-operator, you are a customer to that carrier. Okay. Yes you're, an, yes, you're an employer, but you are also their customer. And that is not something I'm making up. In the, in the operation side of things, things they they refer to two customers okay we're servicing two customers internal customers and external customers external customers are our shippers receivers and just people who are placing the orders Mm -hmm. okay Mm -hmm. but our internal customers are the drivers so when you call if you are not being treated like a customer and that's consistent across the board everybody you talk to doesn't seem like they have time for you or isn't you know treating you like a customer like if you call AT&T or somewhere else um, you're with the wrong company okay because you okay. drivers are the internal customer of every carrier that is something I haven't heard I, that that sounds great yes. I haven't heard of it uh, yes. I haven't heard of a uh, of, of an analogy like that man I, I didn't even see to be honest which i didn't even see us as, as uh as customers man so that's uh that's a great that's a great great point right there that is a great great point so uh see, yeah absolutely. so for the for the uh new jets and for the people out here that don't know what cfi is uh before there uh-huh. was uh there was conway what uh-huh. I, I know that's an abbreviation. What do CFI mean? It stands for Contracted Freighters Incorporated. Oh, okay. Now they bought uh, not not only they brought out Conway, but there was another company uh-huh. that they brought out. Um. Well, I'll tell you what uh, the sort of the trans the whole life story of CFI. It started back in the fifties as CFI, and then. 
uh, in the late 90s, they started doing a lot of business with Conway, Conway Enterprise, which right. they owned, they owned uh, you know, mostly LTL business. Mm-hmm. But they started to they to put all of their uh, all of their truckload freight through CFI, um, and then eventually Conway bought CFI out. They okay. bought CFI out um, like around two thousand and six, I think. Um, and and then what happened was uh, Transforce, which owns Transport America, right. Um, they they actually bought out Conway, and they changed the truckload division, but they gave it back its original brand, which was CFI. Oh, okay. So it's actually it's actually owned by Transforce, but uh, they they gave it back its CFI name, and they brought back the CFI culture. Um, Transforce is an interesting conglomerate. They they own trans they own Transport America. Um, and they own, uh, well, Transforce. They own about four different companies, but they run them all separately. Okay. Um, but they they, they really uh, went back and got some of the old CFI leadership and have brought back that culture. And um, CFI is very, very driver-focused. So everything that I'm telling you about treating drivers like customers and stuff like that, I learned from CFI. Okay. That's what's up. That's what's up. All right, so before uh, before you got into this uh, truck driving uh, field, what, what you was doing beforehand? Well, before I, you know, my dad told me when I graduated from high school, I wasn't sure what I wanted to do. And he said, you need to either go into the military or you need to go drive a truck. That's what you need to do until you decide what you want to do. Mm-hmm. Um and I wish I had listened to him. I didn't listen to him, and I went to school. Um, I went to school, uh, majored in psychology, but I realized pretty quickly that I didn't want to do that. Um, and I ended up, you know, uh, being an administrator at a, a, a place called the Powerhouse. Mm-hmm. Um, and I did that for a while, but uh, really, I I didn't. I've been doing trucking so long; it's hard to forget remember what i did before that but it was really jobs that weren't meaningful to me all right um i didn't didn't find my purpose really until i got to trucking it's like you know they say trucking's in your blood even if you don't get on the truck it's in your blood (laughs) it really is so i'm gonna oh go ahead go ahead once i got on at cfi i was like i knew that i was where i was supposed to be and and that i was going to stay in the trucking industry for the rest of my life all right so your father's a truck driver. I'm assuming mm-hmm. he's your biggest influencer. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. He was on the road, like I said, for 30 years. He just came off of the road in 2015. So I'm 43. So mm-hmm. he he came off the road in 2015. So he came off the road when I was like 38, nine. Oh, okay. <laughs> so my whole life, he was on the road and um you know i'll tell you like i said my dad was gone a lot he was he was out there for three months at a time and he'd be home for a week mm-hmm. um and christmas he'd be home for two weeks but what i learned from that was what i learned from that is that if you work hard you can live well and we lived very comfortably i mean even in the 80s and 90s my dad was making 50 or sixty thousand dollars a year which was good money back then really good money um because he was out there working hard and he really uh, in the summers I went out with him um, mm-hmm. me and my brother turns going out with him um, and you know I just so, yeah it was so a much. It, can flip so, so much yeah what's the and even when I was in there even when I was a senior in high school when my dad would leave I would cry so you know I know that I really know that sacrifice that families make when you've got a mother or a father out on the road. It's what, a huge sacrifice. What was the, uh, being that you went out with your father, you know, your father's an old uh-huh. school trucker, you know, CB in it, uh, quarters, uh, quarters for the pay phones and, and, uh, <laughs> and hard and yeah. hard and hard truck driving. What was the culture like back then? 
Well, the culture was a lot different. Uh, I wouldn't say in some ways it was it was better, and in some ways it was worse. I mean, it was better in that the the driver community itself was a really tight knit community. I mean, drivers really looked out for each other. It was the whole place was like a family out there. I mean, mm-hmm. people really looked out for each other. Um, people took care of each other out there. Uh, part of the culture that wasn't good was, you know, you didn't have that kind of, the kind, you think that there are companies out there right now that aren't driver focused. I mean, back then, drivers were a dime a dozen. I mean, it was the baby boomers and mm-hmm. they were a dime a dozen. And so, you know, they would want you to, you know, make unsafe runs with ETAs and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And my dad did sometimes. I mean, you want to, you want to, I would like to say that my dad ever did everything by the book, but I can tell you that almost no old school trucker did because they couldn't. They were required to keep two or three log books. This was back when we had paper logs. Um, so, you know, there was the companies were not held by the kind of standards that they're held to now by government. So, you know, they would, they would have you running from, you know, I don't know, Oklahoma to California and, and give you like 27 hours to get there or something, you know? Yeah, straight, As a soap, so. straight runs without without no sleep. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, and there wasn't as much that there wasn't, like you said, there wasn't onboard communication. So you had to stop, go to a pay phone, call your driver manager, and they literally gave you every single piece of information over the phone. <laughs> you know, they gave you the... The next address of the pickup, general directions on how to get there, what you're picking up, who to ask for, all that stuff. They gave you all of that stuff over the phone, which is hard to imagine now. It is. It is. Communication. That's why I keep telling. Uh, that's why I keep telling these these new jacks out here, the the old schoolers, they 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 paved the way. They they really did. They 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 paved the way. You know, for for the comfort that I should say, the comfort that we yeah. have now. You know, now we don't have to worry about uh, we we don't have to worry about pulling over, making it to a payphone. We we got the Qualcomm, we got the PeopleNet, we got the we got the Ram and Nally. You know, back then they didn't have none of that. They didn't have none of that. They don't have. They didn't have a cell phone. They when they broke down, if you didn't have a CB back then. And you broke down, yeah. you was pretty much shit out of luck until another yeah. uh, another yeah. truck driver pulled over to at least yeah. help you out. And back then, the the, yeah. the 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 driver relations back then was was tight knit. You know, yeah. they you see a driver you see a driver on the road now we 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 just drive right past them because we already know right. that they they already got somebody coming out to take care of them back then right they didn't they didn't have none of that they didn't have none of that so oh, luckily yeah. luckily if oh, a yeah. driver pull over a driver pull over you know that that was that tight knit community that that real handshake yeah. you know what i'm saying yeah they so, had to take care of each other they really did they had to take care of each other now, if you break down, like you said, you have so many uh, ways to communicate it. And, heck, they can even pull you up on GPS exactly where you are mm-hmm. and know where you are and where you're broken down and stuff like that. But, yeah, drivers had to take care of each other back then. Right. So it was a different – it was in some ways good, in some ways bad. I mean, the culture – as far as uh, how – drivers were treated by companies they were really treated like a commodity i mean drivers were treated like a commodity instead of people back then by the carriers they really were um but and that part has changed for the better i mean i know that people who are newer to the industry may not sense that because not everybody's where they should be as far as their customer service skills towards the driver but as far as what it used to be like you know i mean it it's a lot better as far as that part goes. That side of it's good, a lot much better. 
So now, so now you, uh, so now you're 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 independent. You're an uh, independent entrepreneur with your own company, Heart Driver Solutions. Yes. What uh, what yes. advice would you give someone wanting to pursue the same same career as yours? Uh, recruiting. Yes. Well, I mean, first of all, you have to be wanting to do it for the right reasons. Um, there's a lot of benefits to doing it because, you know, you. I work from home. I have an office inside my house. I work from home, and I have a lot of uh, uh, freedom to kind of move my business the way I want to. But I came into this business with really I, – I did a lot of soul searching before I, I made the career move. And I'm, I came into this side of the business because I really did want to help drivers. I want to help people. And you've got to come in with that mentality. If you come in just, you know, wanting to recruit for the money, which I'm not going to lie, there is a lot of money in recruiting because, and that's where, where it gets to be kind of mucky and people aren't honest because all of the companies, all these carriers out here, they have empty trucks, all of them. And they're all fighting for the same pool of drivers. So, you know, you get paid well as a recruiter, but if you come out here with the wrong uh, motivation and the wrong um, reasons, um, you won't last because drivers will not. I mean, once you get a black eye out there as being uh, dishonest um, and you lose the trust of the drivers, um, you won't you won't be able to do it. But if you've got if you want to help the driver, and you're you're looking to really make a positive impact in the industry as a whole to to get drivers to the right place and keep drivers seated, um, then you know I would um, I would reach out I would start by reaching out to some of the better um, big companies that are doing recruiting. Like there's a really good carry uh, one of my uh, friends Daniel Alexander has a good company called Class A Recruiting. Mm -hmm. They hold their recruiters to a high standard, and um, you know you could reach out to them. As far as getting your own contracts, that's kind of hard. Um, I I just happened to get my own contracts because I had a lot of um, of contacts in the industry from from working uh, with Conway for ten years, but. Um, yeah, I would reach out to like Class A recruiting. Hard Driver Solutions is not hiring recruiters right now, um, mm -hmm. because for me it's hard for me to keep honest recruiters. I will not, I will not uh, keep a recruiter that's not honest. All right. And when you do it the when you do it the honest way, it's harder it, to get the numbers that you that you want and need. But mm -hmm. uh, right now we're not hiring any recruiters. But I would recommend that they reach out to like Class A. Uh, there's another good one out there called Right Turn. Um, if you look those up, you can you can get information on them. Um, but the big thing is come in with the right mentality. You know that you want to help drivers. That you if you're passionate about trucking, um, that kind of thing. But as far as money goes, yeah, there's money out there, but you're not going to make the money that you want if you come in with that being your motivation. That's what's up. That's what's up. So uh, you you kind of went you you kind of went the way that I did when I when I was in uh, road service I, I was working for uh, I was working for this uh, roadside company uh, called Papa Lock back in the day um, and basically what I did was you know I I learned all the companies that would call up for service and I just mm -hmm. kind of went online and you know figured out who all these companies was and i reached out to them like yo um uh, i'm a new company i'm a new startup you know this is what i can offer and yeah boom i got on so basically you just pretty much you know explained that how you got on you pretty much took all the all the information that you learned and oh. you took it for yourself and ran with it yeah, really what I did was, you know, I had a really successful career at CFI. Mm -hmm. I did a good job for them. I did a good job for the drivers. And when I told them I wanted to start my own business, they were like, hey, we'll be your first customer. And really, I just worked for CFI for 
oh, probably the first six months, I was just bringing them drivers. I, you know, I set up my office at home and was bringing them drivers. And I knew that company like the back of my hand, so it was easy to do that. But then as the leadership started going to other companies, mm -hmm. they called me and said, hey, bring us drivers. Like I had one of my vice presidents move down to USA Truck, and then he called me and said, hey, you know, I need help with drivers. And so, you know, I signed up with them, too. Um, and then one of my uh, vice, the other, another vice president from CFI eventually went to Western Flyer Express. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, they kind of scat, you know, people move from company to company when they're in that executive spot. Uh -oh. So, uh, yeah, they, I kind of got it that way. All of my contracts really stem from my time at CFI and the work I put in there. All right. So, yo, um, so who's all of, who's, who's, all the companies, because I'm I'm looking at your your website. Who's all the companies um, that you're that that you're um, that that you're recruiting for? We recruit for, and my website does. Not, we do need to update that. We uh, first a year. We need to update who we have on there. Mm -hmm. um, but we we of course recruit for CFI. We recruit for USA Trucks. We recruit for Transport America. We uh, recruit for Western Flyer Express. That's not to be confused with Western Express. I know you did a. I know you did a spot on Western Flyer too. Yes. Um, and uh, they, we also work for uh, a company called Minstar Transport, which is a smaller company up in Egan, Minnesota. Mm -hmm. um, we work. We I network with people like Class A. I network with them to uh, to bring drivers to. To a company called Epps, uh, to a company called Arnold Transportation, okay. and uh, we also do Heartland Express um, and a few others. But those are the main ones that is, we work with. Is Arnold, being that you just mentioned Arnold, is is Arnold uh -huh. still is is Arnold still umbrellaed up under U.S. Express? think so i don't believe that they are i think they're independently run now but i can't say for a hundred percent okay um, yeah because at one point they right were now, yeah they might and i don't to be honest with you i don't know i do what i can tell you about arnold is that they have a, a really great super regional and a really great regional gig uh they really only hire out of about five states but um, their super regional gets you home every other weekend. The regional gets you home every weekend. But the pay on that is anywhere from fifty to fifty-seven cents per mile, depending on what your experience is. So they've got a really high starting pay over there, and good home time. Their equipment, you know, I always tell everybody the good, bad, and the ugly about a company. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, the good thing about uh, Arnold is you will make money. They've even got a thousand dollar guarantee on the a thousand dollar week guarantee on their uh, on their super regional gig. But you're really looking at taking home more like on you know that's just kind of a safety net. You're going to take home twelve or thirteen a week on that easy. But the the thing I don't like about Arnold is their equipment isn't great. I mean it's not it's reliable equipment it's not breaking down and everything you know it's not something that you're going to be in the shop all the time but you know it's not luxury equipment they've got um older model i'd say 2016 2017 um probably their newest are 2018 a lot of them are 10 feet um so you know some of my other companies have 2020 fully loaded trucks mm -hmm. Uh, Arnold doesn't have that, but they do have good pay and great home time options. Now, you know what? I, I'm beginning to notice a trend on that as well. Uh, some of the companies that has older model equipment, um, uh -huh. some of the companies that has older model equipment tends to t treat their drivers a little bit better than companies with newer model equipment. I don't know. Maybe maybe that's just the way i'm thinking okay because so far i i called uh i talked to uh some drivers that's out here that's still driving like like they company don't buy new trucks like their company don't buy right. brand new trucks they they buy 
like late model vehicles you know like like right. the new the newest the newest truck to that company is a 2016 like dude oh, wow. it's, it's yeah. 20 dude it's 2020 <laughs> no no we we just brought a 2016 wait yeah you you just brought it it comes with an apu though but but on the flip side of that the company treats mm -hmm. their drivers well you know what i'm saying they yeah. get they get them home well, yeah, a lot of times the carriers that have the older model equipment are also the smaller carriers mm -hmm. that, you know, they're they're passing on those savings to the drivers in their pay. You exactly. know, they're going to have the higher pay. But to some people, I'll tell you, Sean, like to some people, equipment is the most important thing because they're going to be out there and they want to be comfortable and all of that stuff. So you have to kind of factor in all those things when you're looking at a job. Make sure you're asking. You, you, first of all, you got to know what's the most important thing to you. Uh, is it pay? Is it home time? Is it equipment? Um, you know, is it the kind of runs that you're going to do and the kind of freight that you're going to do? You kind of want to prioritize what your order of these are the most important things to me and put them in order. And then when you talk to a recruiter, you talk to either an in-house recruiter or somebody like myself, let them know what what order of importance those things are to you because you know um there are people out there that much rather make 47 cents a mile and be in a brand new truck you know but uh if you want to make good money and you don't care you know if you're in a fully loaded truck a company like arnold's great okay that's what's up. That is what's up. All right. So you um so this is all out of home. So basically you have you you have freedom to do basically basically anything that you want. I mean, before we started the podcast, you mentioned that you that you're on the farm. Uh what's what's your yeah. home what's your home life? I mean, you 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 have a family. What's what's your what's your background? Yeah, I'm married. I have a. I don't have any kids, but I do have a. I do have a little hobby farm. I have horses, goats, chickens, pigs. Okay. Um, and but my 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 daily and I do have a lot of freedom. But my daily work uh, life looks a lot like anybody else's. You know, I get up. I get up early in the morning. I get up about six o'clock and do my chores. I'm at my desk by eight o'clock. Um, recruiting, uh, placing drivers, uh, getting their travel set up, all that stuff, uh, until about four o'clock. So, so I'm, I'm at my desk from about eight to four, and then about five o'clock, I'm out doing my nightly tours. Okay. Four thirty-five. You got focus. I'll give you that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you got focus. Well, well Heidi. I always. My, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. As my dad always says, if you're going, if you're not going to be a truck driver, you need to at least work as hard as one. So that's what I try to do. That's what's up. All right, Heidi, right? I, I'm I'm saying your name right. Yeah, that's correct, All Heidi. Right. Heidi. All right, all right. Well, hey, I appreciate you coming on, taking the time, uh, coming on the podcast this evening. Thank you very much. Um, where can uh, where where can our being that I got a podcast, so where can our listeners and and my viewers uh, can connect with you online at? Well, you can find me my my uh, my Facebook page is public, so you can always hop on there. Just even my personal profile, you can hop on there, send me a friend message, text me on there. You can also uh, reach out to us on our on our Facebook page, Hard Driver Solutions. You can reach out to me on the website, and then you can always call me anytime on my cell phone number. I do all my business on my cell phone all right. um, because that way I'm available to you all the time. And my, my cell phone number is 417-483-4213. All right. So re repeat that again. It's 417-483-4213. Four two one three. All right, that's what's up. Well, Heart Drive Heidi of Heart Driver Solutions. Here's her web. Uh, her uh, here's her Facebook page right here that I got up. Heart Driver Solutions. So you guys could uh, get at her on uh, Facebook. Heart Driver Solutions. And then uh, let me see. Is 
hold on right quick. I want to see if this is your, yeah, this is a website, heartdriversolutions.com. So if you guys, uh, if you guys interested in getting with uh, Miss Hart, definitely give her, uh, give her a holler. She's an independent recruiter and she knows what the drivers is looking for. So she's not she's she's not a recruiter for the company so she's probably going to be your best bet as being honest as she possibly can with uh with any company that uh that uh that she's recruiting for well heidi thank you for coming on this evening i really do appreciate it um you're part of the lom community now so uh i hope that you don't become no stranger and uh and definitely uh definitely you know get some advice uh if you have any advice or anything like that definitely give me a call back and we can and we can get back at it again that sounds great i really appreciate you having me LaShawn, and i really appreciate what you're doing too i think what you're doing is just a great uh service to the drivers and to the industry in general so thank you thank you very much i really do appreciate it well i'm about to go ahead and let you go so you can get back to doing your nightly chores so i appreciate you taking the time <laughs> with me and uh you have a blessed night and we're, you you up in wisconsin right i'm in missouri i mean missouri where the hell i get wisconsin yep. see see <laughs> my my bad it's all the midwest hey it's the midwest Hey, you know, Missouri, when every every time I go to Missouri, you you know my favorite casino, a Mary Star, is where I always post up at. So if you if I'm if you guys That's in Missouri great. if you in Missouri and I'm in Missouri, y'all can catch me over at a Mary Star right there in Kansas City. That sounds great. We'll have to have dinner sometime and you stay safe out there and to all the drivers, stay safe out there. Tenfold, tenfold. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, LaShawn. All right, that was Heidi Hart from uh, Hart Driver Solutions. You guys interested in getting with uh, Miss Hart, uh, definitely give her a call. She mentioned her phone number, which is 417-483-4213, or you can email her at Heidi Hart at HartDriverSolutions.com. Well, Thank you guys for watching. I really do appreciate you watching this episode of Lockout Men Podcast for this evening. You guys want to get at me? Get at me. Lockout Men Podcast at gmail.com or hit me up in the uh in the uh, DM on Instagram. Instagram? Yeah, that's Instagram in the DM at Lockout Men. You guys want to talk to me, have some fun with me, conversate with me about your experience. If you want to share your experience out here or just get out here and get at me. Yo, I'm right here. I'm open. Just get at me in the uh, Gmail and we'll make some time together. All right. Well, that's it for that. For this episode, I am gone. You guys have a blessed night. And I am about to get out of here and get some sleep. Well, I got to edit up this. Uh, I got to edit all this up first before I go to sleep. But anyway, <laughs> anyway, you guys have a blessed one. I'll talk to you later. Peace.